Yeah, how you doing? This is uh, Mr. Johnson. I just want to talk to you real quick about industry in North Carolina. That's the that's what we're doing at this point. Uh, made me a couple notes here on the side to keep me kind of focused in because it's so much to do uh, to talk about about North Carolina at this point in time. Um, just you know, just want to let you know that the United States had industrialization uh, as but as well as North Carolina. This really impacted North Carolina uh, a couple different ways. First off. Uh, you know, the three largest things is the textile industry, uh, the tobacco industry, and also the furniture industry. And so there's two books that we're going to gonna dive into to uh, look at North Carolina. It, it gives you a little bit of information. It's kind of like a merge of both. So uh, we talk about those. And, and, you know, like with your textiles, we talk about uh, your mill villages. That's one of your vocabulary words, uh, mill uh, industries, and, and what the I mean, what mill villages, and what the mill village is is basically your old, like your mill town. You know, you had uh, some examples. You had a uh, white oak cotton mill. You had uh, uh, cannon mills in Kannapolis, and a white oak cotton mill was in Greensboro. You have uh, Henry River Mill, which is in Burke County. Uh, not far away. And then you have one that town I'm from, which is uh, Coolamy. You had the Coolamy Mill, and the Coolamy Mill was built right on the South Yakin River. And uh, just to let you know, you know, firsthand experience of these mill towns. And what mill owners would do is these uh, mill, they were called superintendents, these mill superintendents uh, or CEOs they're compared to today they actually would uh, invest in different parts of the community. And they would also make uh, materials fairly cheap in order for people to build what they call shotgun houses. Um, and these, these houses where uh, they're pretty simple in structure, uh, they basically, you can walk through the front door and if you trip, you can trip and fall straight out the back. You can see straight through the house, through the front and the back door. So. Um, that you know, that's just what they were called when when I was growing up as well. And actually, my my grandfather um, lives in a, in a in a mill house uh, structure as well. So, you know, uh, these mill owners will put uh, they were built in. I mean, they would build like churches, recreation centers, and uh, they would build all kinds of things. stores. They would invest in stores. They would invest in schools, which is a big one. And just like the school I went through, Kulami School, it, it, it used to be Kulami graded school. And that's where his children were educated. But uh, these mill towns were similar in structure. And they also, uh, they would also produce. Now, here's the thing. The, the cotton production actually recovered, you know. Uh, and the reason why this is kind of awesome because, you know, North Carolina uh, found a way and it, across the southeast. But I was in North Carolina. North Carolina found a way to make a to make a living off of raw materials, even after the abolition of slavery. So that was pretty pretty phenomenal because everybody thought that the you know that because of the Civil War and the abolition of slavery, that textiles and things uh, or agriculture would would dwindle in the Southeast. Um, North Carolina was actually pretty rich. I think they had. Uh, they had right around 180 total meals around the uh, in the crown North Carolina, and they were pretty much booming at this point, as far as North Carolina is concerned. And the reason why this was very beneficial North Carolina for the simple fact that you had people that actually would. And I'm looking at a map. That's why I'm kind of I always look at my map while I'm talking. But um, what would happen is you had people that would invest their money into the textile industry and also start reaping the benefits. So uh, another thing was this, even after, then you know, we're talking about after uh, Civil War, a lot of your uh, people in the Northeast, they were sitting there thinking about the wealth they had if they came down to the South. Because you, you think about this, North Carolina was the second major producer of not only agricultural products in general, uh, but also the second largest producer of textiles, which is your cloth or your cotton production. 
be right behind South Carolina. So South Carolina's number one, North Carolina's number two. So then you also see the political part shift because back during slavery times, North Carolina down east, they had majority of the political pool because they had all the agricultural parts. But you'll see a map in the book that a lot of things were shipped through the central Piedmont part of the uh, of North Carolina, which considered Salisbury, Statesville, Winston-Salem, places like that. You'll see Charlotte, and, and these became your bustling economic centers, which was in the center, central Piedmont. And then the political started to, uh, the political power kind of shifted a little bit back toward the West. So you're, when you talk about, you know, different things of as far as industry in North Carolina, you know, you'll talk about the, the uh, Duke brothers, you'll talk about that. You'll uh, we'll also, you'll hit up on uh, RJR tobacco. This is the tobacco industry and also the furniture industry, which was, which started in high point. And the reason why that took off in High Point because it was it was located in the hardwood. It was a lot of dense hardwood forest around that area, so it was kind of it was built kind of right in the middle of its own natural resource. Uh, so that's what you have to look at as well, and also pay attention to the quotes you had. People now, all these are local people. When I say local, it wasn't anything you know, a couple hundred miles away. These were people in our own backyard. Uh, as I say, in North Carolina, in North Carolina, it actually put North Carolina on the map. However, due to some things, uh, legislation and dwindling resources and things like that, North Carolina also took a shift back. But North Carolina is very resilient. So I'm going to go ahead, and that's pretty much just an introduction of what we're going to talk about. I'll hit some small ones here and there so that you can see how North Carolina played a part in, in, in the national industrial or gilded age.